your girl beautiful brown baby doll and I'm here today to talk about my current natural hair regimen there has been a lot that has happened to my hair over the years and for those of you all that have followed me you know I've had ups and downs with my hair really due to me not taking the proper care of my hair and I really started to take charge of that about a year and a half or so back when I decided to cut a lot of my hair off and really start to focus on the health of it overall here are some of my tips that I'm using I'm gonna try and break it down and make it easy for for you all to understand what I'm doing without being too complicated. Now I'm not saying that everything I do here just because you share my hair type is going to work for you, but that's why you gotta kinda do some digging and do some research. I have you here, make sure that you comment, share, and also subscribe. And make sure that you come back on Thursdays and some Sundays for video uploads. And also turn on your notifications for me so that you know when I upload and come back and discuss with me and have a good time. I also ask that you all chime in down below. I really do enjoy hearing you guys' regimens and what you're doing as well because a lot of you all are like me. Now let's get into this hair regimen. My natural hair regimen has simplified over the years. I wash about two to three times a month. I moisturize about two to three times a week. I seal in the moisture and I keep a low manipulation regimen. A lot of times we start to use things we don't even know why we're using them. We're using products, we're using different methods, we're trying every regimen out there and we don't even know what actually works for our hair. I had to start listening to my own hair. I learned about porosity. So to quickly give you just a little bit of background on porosity and why it's important. It's not always important to get very scientific with your hair but in order to get longer stronger and thicker hair you do need to understand hair porosity. Porosity does refer to how well moisture is able to penetrate the cuticle layer of our hair shaft. So that's why it's important that you know this so you know what products is best for you. There's everything from low medium and high porosity and you'll sometimes hear medium porosity he referred to as normal porosity. Low porosity hair has a tighter cuticle layer and makes it hard for moisture to get in or out. The other thing is that it feels very dry often. Medium or normal porosity hair is the most balanced of these porosities. It maintains styles better but it also has a very good balance of hydration overall. High porosity hair is usually a bit damaged by chemicals or color or even relaxers. It often lets in too much moisture which can be just as damaging to hair as being too dry. See, I learned that my hair fell within low to normal porosity. Depending on the time of year, depending on what was going on, my hair was more susceptible to being more balanced as far as moisture is concerned. Other times, it's very resistant. Then, I was able to simplify my regimen from there. I've showed you all a video before about my washing regimen, and I will link it here so that you know exactly how I shampoo my hair. But I learned washing and conditioning my hair has to happen in sections. First off, for the hair to become clean, Secondly, for me to make sure that the conditioner is on my hair good and penetrates my hair shafts well. So for y'all and drop the bottle of shampoo. For my shampooing, I like the Garnier Triple Nutrition. While I do use others, I do use this one the most. It seems to keep my hair hydrated even after I wash my hair, it doesn't feel stripped. And this seems to keep it clean, not overly stripping my hair or removing all the moisture from it. This one I kind of found by accident, but it's not very expensive at all. This one is Aunt Jackie's moisturizing and softening shampoo. It is a deep moisturizing and detangling hair bath for chronically dry hair. This one is enriched with shea butter and olive oil. The scents of neither one of these are too overpowering. The Garnier gets a little, a little loud with it. Just a little bit loud but it still does the job. I kind of rotate things in as I feel but for the most part I'm showing you exactly what I use to the highest degree. And now for my conditioners. Yes! You look good, your body good when you conditioned? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. When it comes to conditioners, I like things with hydrolyzed proteins in them or amino acids. They not only help to deep penetrate and strengthen, but they also help my hair to feel softer and smoother and kind of soothe the hair shaft. All of my conditioners and deep conditioners can mainly be found in a store and I have their links down below as well. I love this Herbal Essences. It's Hello Hydration. 
a moisturizing conditioner, coconut essence, and it says it has a softener in it. I should say that the Hello Hydration is one of my only ones that I use as a quick rinse off conditioner. And sometimes I do use it when I make my own little conditioning cocktail. If I co-wash, that's my co-washing conditioner. Here are some of my deeper conditioners. I like the Entwine Hair Mask, and you all have seen me use this one before. It's all about hydrating and restoring your hair's natural moisture balance. And this one can be used as a really good deep conditioner. I often mix any of my deep conditioners with the oil mix, like olive oil and jojoba oil together. And I let it sit on my hair anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. I like the Miss Jessie Super Sweet Back Treatment. I'll tell you though, it's gonna, you know, put your little back on your pockets a little bit. It is a pretty good conditioner and it does really penetrate my hair shaft. I am a big fan of Cream of Nature. And since my early days on YouTube, you all know I've always talked about Cream of Nature. It's an intensive conditioning treatment. And this one you can leave on for a while, but it talks about strengthening broken hair and prevents hair breakage. You want something that's gonna prevent breakage and also put a preventative barrier on your hair so that your hair feels better and it feels smoother. Now this one right here make you Hey, just dance. Three Minute Miracle by Aussie Moist is everything. The first time I tried it, I was like, what? I keep it on a bit longer than three minutes. It really penetrates the hair cuticle. It makes my hair feel hydrated and moisturized. I don't even have to use a lot, especially for it to be a store-bought one. It works pretty well. Baby, throw an olive oil pack on it. Yes, you do with that ORS replenish pack. How often do I do this olive oil pack at least once? once a month. I usually have to throw like two in with another conditioner cause this little packet, my hair be like, <coughs> <laughs> what else you got for me? It's just, it's too thick for all of that. And they're easy to find at any Sally's Beauty, Walmart, or any other place. Another thing that I do guys is I take the different conditioners that I like and I mix them together. So for instance, if I want a more intensive treatment, I go for those intensive treatment conditioners. I put them in, I put a little bit of oil, just based on how much you want, jojoba or an olive oil. And I put that in there, coat my hair, put a bag over it and sit under a warm dry. I have the Layla Ali one and I just usually put the bag over my hair after adding my conditioner, sit under the dryer for like 20 minutes and then go about my business. That allows your hair cuticle to open up and for the conditioner to soak in. Now leave-ins, I use every time I wash my hair. Basically this first one is a styler, but it kind of works as a leave-in. So I usually assist it with a real leave-in. This is the Lotta Body Coconut and Shea Oil 5-in-1 Styling Cream. The detangles and conditions, heat protection, adds moisture and shine prevents split ends and times frizz and you can pick this up at your neighborhood beauty supply. This one was $3.99. The leave-in that I really love using, the Entwine Aphrodisia 9 leave-in. It's not too heavy on my hair, but it also feels like it instantly helps to detangle my hair. The main ingredients in it is mango seed butter, papaya, emu oils, plant protein, vitamin E, and biotin. When I apply my leave-ins, it's usually after my hair has been washed and then I saturate it with the leave-in conditioner. Now I try to let my hair kind of air dry just a little bit to get some of the extra water off. Having low to normal porosity hair is not going to help me anyway to have a whole lot of extra water on my hair. Then I'm able to put on my leave-in conditioner. I love this moisturizer by Lotta Body. The coconut and shea oils moisturize me. $3.99 as well in the beauty supply. Immediately after putting the moisturizer on there I feel like it penetrates again my hair shaft. If I want to use something a little bit more natural. I love shea low butter. It's just a mixture of shea and aloe. A lot of times you can buy that pre-made and I put a link down below and it's good for your skin too. A little bit heavier than this one, but I like it as a moisturizer as well. Another moisturizer I like is the Entwine hydrator. That one seems to work really well on my hair. Again, I moisturize about two to three times a week, so I might rotate these. And I don't find my hair builds up product really easily if I really watch how much I'm using. After washing my hair, I don't really have to put in extra moisture or anything like that other than spraying it down with water and adding a little oil, maybe on the third day. But if you really are protecting your hair, you're not wearing it out all the time, it's not gonna dry out as much. You need to listen to your hair and figure out when 
when it needs to be moisturized and when it's going to be best for you. Even though hair needs moisture, too much moisture can cause issues like breakage and damage because over moisturization makes your hair susceptible to being weak. It's best to seal right after you've washed, applies your leave-in and or your moisturizer. The main point of sealing in your moisture is to make sure that you trap in the moisture that you put into your hair while not allowing too much of the moisture from the outside to get into the hair because again, too much moisture can cause difficulties. I take my sealant after my hair isn't dripping wet and I run it down the length of my hair. Concentrate on the ends because the ends is the oldest part of your hair. That works really well for me. Sealing is achieved through oils, butters, and also silicone based products. Any kind of great essential oil works for my hair. Olive oil, coconut oil, jojoba oil seems to do the best in my hair. It's closest to the human's natural body producing oil. Love to seal with my old school unrefined shea butter. This now castor oil. Here's my mixture of different oils including extra virgin olive oil, jojoba oil, just a smidget of coconut oil, almond oil, and avocado oil. As far as my moisturizing regimen goes during the week, I just use a little bit of my spray which has a little bit of leave-in conditioner, just a little bit of essential oil. I put a little aloe vera gel in here as well. I usually don't have to reseal too much but if I want to add just a little bit of sealant after this then it's okay especially in the cooler months. My intermediate rehydrator. I'm real fancy with it. In the mean and in between time I love this S Curl No Drip by Luster. That is a curl activator moisturizer. I'm talking about some good in a bottle but this is good for helping to rehydrate as well. Y'all as far as hair tools I'm pretty simplistic there as well. I tend to use a wide tooth comb otherwise I can tangle with my fingers. I have a paddle brush that needs to be clean. I don't even want to weigh this in front of y'all too much because I don't need to judge me. And I have this brush which I use for combing up and brushing up my edges. It was two or three dollars at like Sally's. I use clips to clip my hair back especially when washing or when styling my hair. I also use knee highs to tie my hair up and that's a cheap way of pulling up and tying up your hair which I've shown you all in several videos in the past. I also love these satin scrunchies. They're not rough if you just want to pull your hair up. Sometimes instead of using the knee highs I use these bad boys. They're amazing especially when it's time to go to sleep and you want to pineapple your hair. I use just the large satin or silk scarves like this. And if my pillow does fall on the ground, which often it does with my satin pillow covers, then I'm able to still be protected with these. Or I just sleep with a satin bonnet. Or I use one of these Grace Elay caps. They're satin lined. If I do choose to use a blow dryer on my hair, I use the Silk Element Heat Protection Spray. The Mega Silk Heat Protection Cream. Both of those I bought from Sally's and they're very inexpensive as well and I find that they work really well. You know, all of us have our own different walks, natural hair journeys. Even Bella back here got her own little natural hair thing. Don't you girl? Got your little thing going on. Make sure that you let me know some of the other ideas you have for me. I'm so happy to be back in the space, y'all. I really am. Y'all don't understand. So much love. Beautiful brown baby doll. Peace.